Hello and welcome to another Weather Sphere video. The official start to winter is less than two months away, but old man winter is already baring his teeth in some areas. So what could you expect to see this winter in your area? There are many factors that play into our forecast, so let's get right into it. The biggest factor that could play into this winter season is the El Nino, which is still strengthening off the South American coast. There are four regions we keep an eye on when forecasting the ENSO pattern, but pay closest attention to this Nino 3.4 region. Across the area, temperatures are widespread 1 to 2 degrees above average, which translates into a moderate to strong El Nino. Looking at the average pattern for these two scenarios shows a lot of variation. A moderate El Nino typically brings cold weather to most of the country with dry conditions in the Midwest and Great Lakes, while a strong El Nino brings significant warmth to the north and cold to the south, with dry conditions in the Ohio Valley and Northern Plains slash Rockies. Based on current model forecasting, it looks like the beginning of the season may feature a strong El Nino, with a weakening trend later in the winter. This would mean a warm start and a cold finish to the season. The next major factor is what we call the QBO. Basically, this has two phases, an easterly phase and a westerly phase. This QBO is currently in an easterly phase, which typically translates to a weaker polar vortex and more cold air outbreaks than normal. The polar vortex is a strong jet stream that surrounds the Arctic, and a weakened or disrupted polar vortex usually translates to big cold air outbreaks and Arctic chill. Another factor is the MJO, and while the MJO is a lesser-known phenomenon, it can have dramatic impacts across the states. Current forecasting and analogs support phases 1, 2, and 8, which tend to bring warmth to the north and west, and cold to the south and east. Next, and possibly most known, is the NAO, or North Atlantic Oscillation. For snow lovers across the eastern U.S., a negative NAO pattern is what you want to see. This features a large blocking high pressure in central and southern Canada with low pressure across the southeast U.S. Looking at one of the forecast models for the winter months shows this exact pattern happening, increasing chances for cold and snow across the east. Lastly before we get into models, here are my two main analog years to help forecast this winter. Firstly is the winter of 2009 and 2010. Note that I am not saying this winter will be exactly like these past winters, there are just many similarities between them. Temperatures during the 09 to 10 winter were cold for almost all of the U.S., excluding the Pacific Northwest, Upper Great Lakes, and New England. The Southwest, Midwest, and East Coast were noticeably wetter than average, with dry conditions in the Northwest and Ohio and Tennessee valleys. Looking at snowfall from this winter season shows a large swath of above a normal snowfall across much of the South and Mid-Atlantic, with considerable snow falling as far south as the Gulf Coast and Florida. Next is the winter of 1982 to 1983, and this winter split the country tempwise, with warmth in the north and cold in the south. Precipitation this winter was greatly increased across the west coast and southeast, with drier anomalies in the Ohio Valley. Next, let's look at what the models say could happen this winter. First is the Canadian model which paints a slightly warmer than average winter across most of the country, with average or below average temps possible in the southwest and southeast. Precipitation-wise, it paints a wet picture for the southeast and northeast, and parts of the Midwest and West Coast, while dry conditions prevail in the Northwest and parts of Texas and the Ohio Valley. Next is the North American model, which says a warm winter can be expected in the West and extreme North, with average temps across the eastern half of the country. Similarly to the Canadian model, this model shows wet conditions in the Southeast, Northeast, and California, with dry conditions in the Northwest. The final model I'll look at today is the European model, which, like the North American model, gives a warm winter to the west coast and extreme north, with average temps across the eastern half of the country. Precip-wise, it gives the southeast a very wet winter, with some dry spots in the midwest and northwest. Finally, 
Here is my forecast for the upcoming winter 2023-24 season. First looking at temperatures, I expect a warmer than normal winter across the northwest, northern Rockies, and most areas near the Canadian border. The white area extends across most of the middle of the country and southern Florida, where temperatures could be above or below average, though I have low confidence in either scenario. Lastly, much of the southeast looks to stay slightly below average this winter, though significant cold shouldn't be expected. This area has also shifted farther east than my last forecast as model data has changed. Precipitation-wise, not much has changed from my last forecast. A wet winter can be expected across much of the east coast and south, as well as the southeast, while drier than average conditions look to prevail in the northwest and Great Lakes. Next, and possibly most excitingly, is my snowfall forecast. Again, not much has changed since the last forecast, but I expect a snowier than average winter across much of the southwest, southeast, and mid-Atlantic. This would especially be true across the higher elevations in the southern Rockies, Sierra Nevada, and Appalachians. Unfortunately for snow lovers, below average snowfall seems to prevail in much of the northwest and Great Lakes, with much below average snowfall possible in the lake effect snow regions in the upper Midwest and New York. Finally, here is my updated prediction map for this upcoming winter season. Starting in the northwest, this winter looks to stay warmer and drier than average, though some large storms and some cold air should still be expected. Next, in the flip-flop region, areas here should expect a volatile winter, with some hot and dry periods and some cold and wet periods. Next, the southwest should expect to stay wet this winter, with heavy snows at elevation. There will still be dry periods, but a wet winter overall looks most likely. In the southern Rockies, big snow is possible as the subtropical jet stream looks to set up over this area, bringing frequent storm potential. Across the central Rockies, typical mountain snow can be expected. Some areas will see more than others, but overall, the area looks to be around average. Temperatures here may be slightly above average. Next, in the upper Midwest, Mild conditions look to prevail with less arctic chill than you would usually see in a winter season, and some areas may be drier than normal. In the light red area in the Midwest, conditions should be near average this winter, though less arctic chill will be possible. This area and to the south may be in for ice storms this winter, so be on guard. Next is the toss-up region that encompasses parts of the Central Plains, Ohio Valley, and Northeast. This is the area I have least confidence in, and this winter could have many outcomes here. South of this region is an area I believe has a considerably higher shot at seeing major winter storms than normal. Due to an active subtropical jet stream that is typical in El Nino winters, large storms have the potential to develop just south of this area, which could bring heavy rain, dangerous ice, and snow to this region. The same can be said to the south of this area in the blue region, where chances are high for wintry precip but not as high as to the north. This area also looks to be colder than normal the later we go in the season. The southeast also looks to stay wet and cool this winter, though southern Florida may see less cold temps than other areas. Next in the red area is where I believe the worst conditions of the winter may set up. An active southern jet stream looks to bring a lot of storms across this area, and when cold air is present, major winter storms may break out. Heavy snow, sleet, ice, and high winds are possible here. This is also true across the northeast and New England, where major nor'easters could set up. However, if the jet stream goes too far south, this area may miss out on some of the large storms, leading to a less snowy winter. Along the Canadian border and in parts of the Ohio Valley, less snow should be expected, especially in areas that usually see a lot of lake effect. The pattern that looks to set up this winter tends to not support major lake effect events, with a wind from the northwest prevailing at times. Lastly is the upper Ohio Valley and Great Lakes, where a mild and dry winter is expected. This region looks to be missed by most of the major storms this year. Though snow and cold should still be expected. Thanks for watching. 
Do keep in mind that we are still over a month out from winter, and that this forecast is not going to be 100% accurate. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe, and hit the notification bell for future uploads. If you have any feedback, please leave a comment, and have a wonderful day.